Hi everyone, John again, trying to make hay while the sun shines, as they say. And I wanted to talk about, as we get into mid-September, one more perfume from my collection that I, uh, well, maybe one of the most recent ones that I buy that I bought completely blind. Um, I've, I've tried to really stop doing that, and thankfully I'm doing it much less often. But it is Fougere Royale from Oubigan, the uh, lovely French perfume company. By the way, totally superficial observations about the presentation, but this bottle is really, really beautiful. Um, just love the bottle, the sort of um, de uh, deviled glass thing, and the cap weighs about 37 pounds. Um, anyway, I'm usually not much of a bottle person, but I sort of like this also with the little silver thing. It's it, it looks really, really nice. So, anyway, on to the actual review itself. Um, you might have seen, if you go putzing around in the perfume community on uh, YouTube at all, um, a few reviews of this in the past couple of years. I'm really, really glad that it's starting to slowly but surely get more attention than it has been getting lately. Um, it seems like... Well, to the extent that there was a perfume community on YouTube in 2010 when this was released, it wasn't really talked about, but in the past year or two that's been changing, and I really, really appreciate that. So this is Fougère Royale, the 2010 version, and it, of course, if you don't know the history of this perfume, I'll just give you a little bit of a rundown. It's a resurrection of the original formula which was created in 1882 by Paul Parquet, the, the, the French perfumer. The new version is the work of Rodrigo Flores Roux, uh, who has created most of the Jean Varvedo fragrances, just as sort of a baseline of where you might have experienced his work before. Most of Jean Varvedo's and the higher-end Dolce & Gabbana line, sort of like the Lux line that they have as well as many of the fragrances for the brand of Arquiste. Uh, this is a very pared down notes list that I was able to find, but I think that it gives a pretty good uh, general impression of what this is all about. It is uh, the very first men's fougere in the history of perfumery. Um, well, like I said, this is a recreation of the very first Mince Fougere. Um, so this should have sort of um, reminiscences of Fougeres, but it's it's not one of those uh, heavy, you know, beastly ones that you sort of might think of when you think about the the 70s and 80s. It's, it's a little bit different, and I'll ex try to explain that in the body of the review. So, top notes, lavender, clary sage, chamomile, green notes, and bergamot, middle notes of geranium, heliotrope, rose, orchid, cinnamon, lilac, and carnation, base notes of oak moss, tonka, musk, patchouli, amber, and vanilla, and it's classified as an aromatic fougere. I'm sure that almost uh, anyone reading or watching on YouTube will, will be familiar with uh, the history of the fragrance, but if you're not, just a short little rundown. So, like I said, um, the first fougere, or which is French for fern-like or resembling a fern ever created for men, uh, fougeres, if you're not familiar, um, use a lot of coumarin, which is a synthetic tonka bean derivative that kind of smells in its pure form like mown grass or dry hay. It's got a really, really lovely smell. I've been lucky enough to smell the, the actual chemical all uh, on its own. Um, it, they also use a lot of uh, lavender and oak moss. 
And during the 70s and 80s, they had the reputation for being sort of big, bold, and overbearing. Um, thankfully, this version, the 2010 relaunch, is sort of a brighter, fresher, more um, modern interpretation. Um, and it isn't really full of bluster like you, you might associate the word fougere uh, for being. So when you first spray it on your skin, you get this sort of generalized olfactory impression of what you think a mince fougere probably smells like. Um, except it's not really like Gazzaro Porome or Draco Noir or anything more modern. It's, it's not mixed with heavy doses of warm spiciness like cinnamon or cardamom or cumin or anything like that. Most of the spices here, the ones that I can smell, are fresh. Um, definitely pick up a lavender-heavy top mixed with this sort of beautiful floral, anisic, fresh grassiness that echoes the smell of ingredients like chamomile and parsley and maybe even a hint of cilantro. It's just a really nice green, verdant smell uh, ever so slightly floral despite all of those floral notes that I missed that I listed in the note breakdown at the beginning this doesn't come off as an overly floral or feminine scent um, I, I would say it's perfectly unisex I don't think it, it rings too masculine but it's it's not uh, it's not a rose scent or a carnation scent or a lilac scent um, like the the notes list might uh, might lead you to believe a lot of those flowers are just quite in the background and quite subtle. So as the greenness wears down, this sort of fresh spiciness starts to come through, where you get uh, carnation, geranium, and cinnamon. Yeah, if, if anything, those those flowers sort of add uh, a bit of spiciness more than they do a traditional sort of floral. Uh, feeling. Like many in classic fougeres, uh, the ones with a reputation for, you know, preceding you into a room, this does have a lot of notes, only a handful of which I can really pick out. So um, the, the scent is really, really well done. Uh, it manages to have uh, something of the past in it while also being a really, really lovely modern interpretation of something from the 19th century. I usually uh, hesitate to uh, suggest or tell someone how to wear something or when to wear something, but I can only speak for myself when I say that this blooms most beautifully off of my skin when it's really quite warm outside, warmer than it's been here in a few weeks, which is why I've been wearing it less often. <laughs> However, I will say that this bottle is only about six months old, and I only have, what, maybe about 60% of it left, so um, I might have to treat myself to another uh, bottle to uh, make sure that I don't run out next year when it starts to get hot. But again, uh, I get four to six hours with this. With the kind of perfume that it is, being one for hot heat, uh, for, for hot weather, I don't really see a problem with reapplying. Just reapply. It's not a big deal. It's a 100 ml bottle. Eh, it's money. You're not going to miss it, right? <clears throat> By the way, just as uh, you know, something to mention, this also comes out in a pure parfum concentration. With its own lacquered box, um, I did not get the lacquered box, I just got the, the EDP concentration, which can be yours for a mere $600. It's a deal. I think you can buy that on Lucky Scent if you're interested in the, uh, in the Pure Parfum concentration. Again, I don't know why they're making Pure Parfum concentrations of a scent like this. Um... It's supposed to be a light, summery, refreshing fougere. Why, why would you make a pure parfum concentration of that? 
<clears throat> maybe uh, maybe someone smarter than me can can answer that in the comments. Um, this version, however, uh, can be uh, located online for its retail price of around 170 U.S. dollars. However, there are places online where you can find it for a fraction of that, um, less than half of it, actually. But I'm not going to say where because I don't want my supply to run out. Um, however, I've, uh, like I said, I found it on the gray market for for less than half that. So if you're looking for something in your collection to fill a niche for just those really, really dreadful days of high heat, this is something that I think is really sophisticated, really beautiful, really nice, and it has a lot of history behind it. Um, thankfully, with a bit of a modern twist, um, I, I would be both interested and a little bit scared to smell the <laughs> the version that's literally 135 years old. Um, probably smells a little bit dated, to say the least. Since we think things from the 90s smell dated, I'm sure something from 1882 would probably smell a little bit dated as well. But anyway, that's what I have to say about Fougère Royale by Ouvillon. Um, get your nose on a sample if, you, if anything I said sounds interesting. It's really, really nice stuff. Talk to you later, guys.